Herr Albrecht Klemm. So we'll talk about regular, but I can't read the rest. Well, please go ahead. Okay, so this uh, uh, I will uh, thank you for uh, inviting me. And uh, actually, is uh, is uh, my uh, I graduated here ninety years and uh, ninety <laughs> not ninety years ago, but uh, in the nineties, and uh, it's, uh, it's fun to be back. So um, I mean, a regular tiling is what uh, you also see outside, actually, on these uh, doors. Uh, it's a relatively stupid design, but uh, <laughs> it's like it's like that. I mean, this is um, there are four, uh, there are, uh, there are three of those, and this is one of of them. Maybe I make it a little bit it up here. And so that uh, has, uh, you see the vertices have uh, uh, valence uh, three. And then there's of course the even more boring tiling. Um, where the vertices have a valence four. And then there is a tiling which, where the vertices have a valence six. Had to make it impressive, but um, but one thing is of course I mean here is for instance a vertex of valence six and then um, you see but uh, this one is actually dual to the first one so here uh, so this is dual to the hexagon filing so that is for the x so x quad that um, triangular. And now <clears throat> I wanted uh, to start my talk with a, a geometric construction. Of uh, MG, these are certain graph manifolds and they will be a uh, color Biao. Um, L folds actually. So it's a bit um, <clears throat> similar, and what I uh, similar to uh, the talk that was given on, uh, where, for instance, we had the series of banana graphs. Uh, <clears throat> but here I have a little bit uh, more, um, more <clears throat> uh, different. I mean, different graphs and so a bit more variety. So what I do is uh, I first uh, associate uh, to every a vertex uh, a, a P1. Uh, in all of these graphs and I just number number them. And uh, of course, uh, secretly this has a second coordinate let's say X, I and U, I. And then um, I take uh, I take a, a certain contour, which is a con convex contour, and uh, and sort of uh, this should be uh, generic. So, for instance, I can uh, go like this, uh, or I can go like this, and then I pick up a couple of these p1s, and this I call a graph. So, um, <clears throat> so. As I said, I will not uh, focus too much on this lattice because this lattice is uh, anyway, uh, locally dual to the hexagonal uh, lattice. <clears throat> so, um, so we have this curve, uh, which cuts out a graph um, G, and that's why this manifold gets labeled by this graph. <clears throat> And then um, I want to uh, <clears throat> I want to uh, take certain propagators. So I mean, graph has propagators, you can imagine. And these propagators, uh, so we have uh, internal propagators, uh, which uh, are just uh, x i minus x j. Uh, to some weight, <clears throat> and uh, uh, <clears throat> these are internal propagators that we gave to the x, and uh, <clears throat> then I also um, maybe uh, forgot here that uh, um, 
external legs, which of course uh, appear by this cutting, uh, will be labeled by called AI in some labeling. So I have also external legs. Um, they are uh, XI minus AI uh, WIJ. So these are my propagators and um, please convenient to make a negative sign and the weights are all first. And now um, <clears throat> I uh, <clears throat> want to have uh, in general a property. I mean, this is not the most general situation, but um, <clears throat> so uh, generally uh, we want we want um, for each vertex a vertex i. Uh, we want the property that if I uh, let's say, uh, say uh, if I uh, take these weights and sum over all the uh, until new for this, and maybe multiply with uh, two, then it should be two dip. And in a sense, uh, I take a very symmetric choice. So I take the choice that uh, w is just equal for all and is equal to itself. So that would be um, two thirds. For a new equals three and one half for a new equal uh, four and one third for a new equal uh, six. And you see, this is uh, the, the way. <clears throat> so this is, uh, is a conformality condition. So as we will see in a second. And you see, this is sort of a, a resonant uh, choice. So you can say, um, <clears throat> I make the simplest resonant choice, and that uh, that is this one. And uh, resonant comes from the fact that these are corresponding at the end of the day to certain uh, hypergeometric system, and this is a particular symmetric and resonant choice. Of course, you see that in this uh, <clears throat> lattice, the angles play a role. So basically, uh, as you see, I mean, if if I have here, I can sort of say I put the weight simply here. And then, but I, I didn't, I mean, I can sort of say and take an orientation, but I will put the, these uh, weight on the propagators as it's appropriate. <clears throat> okay, so then um, <clears throat> is, so what is, uh, what is MG? So, um, so I defined um, I'm MG. And as I said, I don't have to define it for uh, for all for the hexagonal lattice because of this duality, which I explain a little bit more. Uh, but uh, what I do is I take uh, y to the d, maybe over d. I take a w, and then I take a, a polynomial in uh, strictly speaking in x, uh, u, and uh, this a's, this outer things, and uh, <clears throat> I. Um, take d equal uh, three for a new equal three and d equal uh, two for new equal uh, four. And, uh, and uh, this I do because uh, I want, in a sense, I want to uh, recover the Feynman amplitude. And uh, I defined uh, this mg as being uh, this uh, d, uh, sorry, uh, this is now, I just have to specify this one. So this is the MG, but the, uh, I haven't said what the P is. So the P is basically uh, that I take uh, the product of XI minus XJ uh, over these internal lines and the uh, product of XI minus AI over the, uh, over the internal lines or over the, the external lines. And now you see why I'm doing that for these lattices, because we have, uh, <clears throat> I mean, technically speaking, uh, we have a base, which is P1 to the L, uh, because I uh, associated to all of them uh, <clears throat> a base. And then of course we have that uh, the canonical class of the base is something like the product of two times of the hyperplane class of all this, uh, of all these P1s. And if I do this now, then I have that 
the branch locus, I mean, I have then that uh, D minus one over D uh, times uh, KB. Um, I mean, I, I, I have, I need the Calabiao condition. Uh, And that will be, uh, that happens to be uh, a new times HI. And now you think that, uh, see this works because, um, because um, <clears throat> uh, the, I mean, if, uh, if the, if the valence is, uh, is, uh, if there's a four valence, then every X has to appear four times of every pure. And therefore, uh, you get four times the hyperplane class and the branch locus is okay. And if uh, you um, have the valence three, then every X1 has to appear three times, but it does because the valence is three. And so I get, uh, uh, so then, uh, therefore, um, <coughs> uh, MG is the color of Yau. There is. And of course, the reason that I'm doing that is that I'm uh, sort of uh, want to, uh, I want uh, my, my period integrals uh, to be related to, uh, to the Feynman integrals for this graph. So, um, so you can, um, you can uh, uh, say, uh, I mean, let me uh, first give a couple of examples. So, um, so let's say we have an, an example would be, you look at uh, this and here I <clears throat> have an important mission. So these AI, they are all in uh, the uh, one point compactification of uh, C. So they are in C and there is actually a, a PSL to Z action is a P at the to Z action. And what I should also have said that I will make a couple of comments when this D is general, but here I took actually, as you can see from this uh, thing, I took actually D equal to. So it's a D, it's a two dimensional conformal field three, but it's actually uh, not, um, <clears throat> it's not um, uh, unitary. And uh, it's a very interesting two dimensional field three, but you see because of this SL2Z action, I could not, uh, I can uh, now put my points like that. So what I get here is um, <clears throat> is uh, simply a curve, um, <clears throat> which is so. This is a, a genus. I mean, is a is a genus uh, <clears throat> one uh, belly curve. So this is uh, is branched at three points, uh, and it it turns out to be at the point of complex multiplication. And then this is important for the rest because in a sense, the higher dimensional Calabiaus for this uh, three, dag three diagonal lattice will be also at complex multiplication in a, in a sense. <clears throat> um, and then, well, the, this is for the three valence lattice. And then uh, I just want to show you that you know this guys. Uh, so we can take uh, one infinity Z. Now I have of course uh, four points. So I take the cross ratio. And that is just a Legendre curve. So in this case, uh, remember that I take this uh, covering X minus one and then uh, X minus Z. So this is the, uh, the Legendre curve. So uh, <clears throat> of course, as you, See, uh, from this uh, branching locus, this guy becomes relatively singular. If I go to higher, so these are, these are now, uh, there's a still clue. But MG is singular. For L uh, greater than one. And, uh, <clears throat> but you can, uh, Quite trivial, you can smooth them, and you will find actually a, a, a pair of reflexive polyhedra. So uh, we can smooth them. Can smooth them, and then we get uh, 
uh, from the Newton polytope from this smooth sky, we get uh, find that is actually a reflexive. Uh, this is a pair of reflexive polyhedra. And this means that um, that this uh, becomes now a smooth, a smooth um, uh, L fold. But I don't want to. Uh, I mean, I can sort of say give now that the first you will see has, uh, of course, Euler number twenty four. It's a K three. Then the next one uh, have high Euler numbers. I don't want to give you, but this is easily calculable. Uh, <clears throat> so that's um, that's uh, that's this goal. So, um, so now I come a little bit closer to uh, why I'm doing it and why, what is the physical interpretation of all of this. So, um, I mean, of course I'm doing it with uh, very similar um, intentions than uh, in all calculations of Feynman graphs by Calabiao periods. I want <coughs> to see that the uh, <coughs> Calabiao period uh, has to do something with the uh, with uh, the Feynman graph, <clears throat> and <clears throat> yeah, no, no, that's an important point. Of course, these these models are very restricted, and so this is the guy that why, why this is singular. Basically, because your branch points has some. I will say more about this. We will see actually. Uh, how you uh, can be, uh, live with the subfamily and resolve the thing with blow up. So that's possible. <clears throat> but there's a very interesting twist in this uh, in this construction. So um, <clears throat> so anyway, let's uh, define for each p1 for this p1 i. I will define the measure. Um, And then the, so to say, the reason is we want uh, Calabiao periods uh, to be equivalent to a, a Feynman integral. So, and, uh, and that uh, uh, works uh, because uh, if you let's say take a period uh, over this graph mg, then I take uh, the normal Griffiths residuum form. So I take some cycle in H, L, M, uh, G, maybe Z. We will talk about this later. Let's uh, just keep it open for the second. And then <clears throat> I take um, I take uh, this measure. So I get this product of these measures. Um, And then I take one cycle around uh, omega. So this this uh, this goes uh, this is gamma goes uh, it circles is omega equals zero, and then I get this one. And if I now do the integral, I get uh, of course uh, still this one, and I get here a y a d d minus one. And then if you solve this equation, what y is, then you get actually, uh, then you get uh, the product over all the p1s and you get uh, just this, uh, this propagators. Yeah, I don't have to write the denominator so here. Just this uh, sum over all the propagators, the ij, the external, and also uh, the internal. So first, let's get the look. Remind you of this and that. I know. Uh, yeah. But, okay. Anyway, you, you know it by now. Uh, <clears throat> otherwise, I have to. So, so these are the internal ones, let's say, and these are. And as I, <clears throat> of course, this uh, in integral precisely makes sense because it is a color real, because this uh, weights and the. Uh, fact that this uh, lattice have the right um, valence uh, is responsible for the fact that uh, this, um, this, uh, this, that this one is a nice Calabiao form. 
And so this integral makes sense as a Calabi-Yau theorem. So let me um, <clears throat> tell you something which is different than, uh, <clears throat> than, uh, uh, than in the previous uh, talk on primal graphs. So these are, uh, these are uh, 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 integrals, uh, or these are <clears throat> primal diagrams in uh, momentum in position space, in position space. Uh, space. So in other words, um, <clears throat> when I have, uh, let's say, uh, this configuration, which would be a uh, Calabi-Yau threefold, because it has three points, so it's a three-dimensional uh, thing, then what it really means in position space is that I have to take the dual graph. And that means that this dual graph now um, has indeed is a train track graph. And then you see that it has as many loops as the guy has positions. And in a sense, it's just this idea, okay, I, I fix all these external positions AI and I integrate over the internal uh, possibilities of, moment, of positions and that is my integral in the position. So then, uh, so that's this, uh, that the loop is indeed the number of uh, P1s. Right? I mean, the, the measure is always the same. So the measure is just the product over these, these guys for each P1. Well, I mean, here, okay, yeah, this is, you're right. I mean, here I should, uh, should actually put UI. Yeah, so that I can take the residuum when I'm in circle and W is the zero or DW. So I'm encircling uh, W equals zero in the W frame. I don't have to specify. No, no, I mean, this is so to say the standard differential, uh, residuum differential of Griffith. I mean, uh, and that uh, that one uh, yields this one. So for the elliptic curve, you could do exactly the same thing and you would get uh, the differential square root of the, of the branch of the, when you write the Lagrange response. But it's, it's just, it's just here you would get from the same thing, you would get the X over Y and that is Y is the square root of these guys. And that's how you get this propagation. No, no, you have to, uh, this is the path. It goes generically around the locus Y, uh, W equals zero. Okay. So here I have no choice, but here I have a big choice. I can <laughs> put all kinds of, uh, of, of cycles here. So that's, uh, that's also important. <clears throat> and uh, now it comes to the second part of the talk. So this is uh, a little bit about the physical origin, uh, origin of this problem. And uh, this um, uh, started with, um, so this is a suggestion. So it uh, starts with n equal four super young mills theory. Super young mills theory in uh, <clears throat> d dimensions, and um, <clears throat> uh, people have uh, discovered uh, this has a like this has a Youngian symmetry. This has a Youngian. It's a Youngian integral system. Integral system. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> of course, now why I do this so general, it has, so to say, fixed propagator weights, it has, uh, it has a fixed dimension, it's uh, best in, in four dimensions, and so on. But, um, <clears throat> but uh, um, <clears throat> the early people, I mean, there's a lot of literature on that, but the early people were Gun, uh, Guru. Gurdan and uh, Kazakov. Sorry, I wrote this wrong. Gurdan and uh, Kazakov uh, suggested in 2000, I mean in 15, to uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, study these Youngian symmetries, uh, Youngian symmetries more general. Uh, 
more general, and in particular in all dimensions. But if you, so this is a deformation, uh, as deformation. But it's still true that uh, your Lagrangian, I mean, they call this the fishnet theory, it stands for fishnet for, because you have these nets actually. Uh, and it was actually invented by uh, Paul Yakov. Um, and uh, so this, um, so let's say we have uh, some some variables in this uh, n equal four Young Mill series. So we have uh, these are matrix variables. And then uh, your Lagrangian has to be a trace. <clears throat> so it's a, I, I should also say uh, I take the gauge root that we in color. And then uh, you have uh, so you have a trace, and you have e mu x e mu x bar, and then you have e mu z uh, e mu z bar, and then you have uh, this in, uh, this uh, interaction term uh, x uh, z x bar z. And uh, and they uh, so to say they uh, discovered that in any dimension uh, this is uh, corresponds of course to the three, uh, four valent graph because you have this interaction but they discovered that in any uh, dimension this has uh, these uh, Youngian symmetry and uh, and so they <coughs> uh, proposed it to be an interesting problem to um, <coughs> to study it in general and it indeed is quite uh, quite nice. Uh, X and Z, sorry, X and Z. You are just two Hamish made. Hmm? Well, this is just the, how the series is built up. I mean, uh, it's, um, it's basically um, <clears throat> it's basically this part of the of the amplitude of the super young mills theory, which has this young symmetry, and um, and you can, hmm? yeah, yeah. Right. So um, let me. Yes. Hmm? Yeah. If the dimension, I mean, here, here, I didn't fix the dimension, uh, but the claim is that uh, in all, I mean, the most interesting in a dimension in which this problem was studied was six, four, and two. And uh, I studied most mostly in two dimensions, uh, but um, it turns out that um, that uh, some properties of these, and I come to this now, some properties of these things are uh, interesting in all dimensions, and the most challenging case is actually the sixth dimension. So, uh, and beyond sixth dimension, there uh, there is uh, no um, the theory actually fails. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. it still uh, has a young symmetry, and um... anyway, so this is the uh, setup. And uh, now I should also uh, say that um, that the um, <clears throat> there is an. I mean, as uh, the theory is of course a little bit special, but there is an amplitude. Uh, or at least something which is uh, monodromy invariant. Invariant. And, and that is simply, uh, so I call this A, uh, A graph. And this was um, the period of the graph. Uh, and that uh, is simply uh, defined by P uh, D mu, Batch p mu bar p from one to uh, l and then and then uh, again the propagators but now the propagators uh, raised uh, to the absolute power so this is a real quantity
And that is, uh, is an interesting real, real quantity. And its particular uh, is, um, is single valued. So it has no monotron. Uh, that's what is expected. Good. And if you do this indeed in, in four dimensions, so again, so I do, do it in four dimensions, then uh, what you get is that this A, uh, let's say of the cross in D equal four is something like, uh, so now I, I uh, introduce certain real parameters. Uh, don't worry about it too much. Um, <clears throat> and um, then I need some factors. And uh, here I have essentially real parameters in the propagator. So here, sigma i minus a i, but these are not the same a i, these are real parameters. And uh, this one is uh, famously, uh, is uh, the bloch wigner d log. So that uh, has some uh, one, two, and three, four. Uh, and then it's the bloch wigner d log of z. And this uh, z is, uh, is, 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 so the z is essentially a cross switch. And this D, uh, D is either this block, Wigner dialog. And uh, so, uh, so just uh, to, do, to remind you, it's uh, D that is something like uh, the D imaginary part of D2. Uh, of z um, plus uh, log of z log of one. So, uh, so this is uh, this is uh, also uh, the uh, this is actually the volume of a tetrahedron uh, with respect to a hyperbolic metric. And uh, and so uh, the of course uh, in a sense the one of the um, <clears throat> punchlines of these new developments in uh, in um, <clears throat> amplitudes is that maybe these amplitudes are all volume. Uh, so um, <clears throat> now um, I want to go to the next session, which is um, <clears throat> is the so to say I bring together. The physics and the geometry now in a, a quite in a way in a way so this third session is um, combining physics geometry and I'm back in talking mainly about the equal uh, two case. So, um, so we have um, in this uh, work uh, studied this thing uh, quite uh, quite intensively, and uh, we uh, first of all you will uh, worry what is so to say the analog of the uh, of the of the quantum of this block Wigner dialog, and uh, the answer is um, this is my claim one, in effect. Uh, it is pretty obvious to each to each uh, um, as a new equal three new equal four um, uh, graph, and then by extension to something which I don't make very clear, but with uh, uh, new equal six, um, we can we find we find that the analog. <clears throat> so in a dialogue is basically a P dagger sigma a P with some factor uh, of I. Uh, <clears throat> so the amplitude, so the amplitude is, is that. Um, let me write this a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so this is the amplitude of the graph. So uh, it's actually uh, some uh, rational function that is uh, that you have to pull out, and the sets are generically sub cross ratios. And then um, it is p dagger 
um, um, sigma p. And uh, in other words, it's something like q, uh, a rational function uh, times e to the minus k. So essentially, you see, this is like here, there's also a cross ratio, but here, this is actually also a real quantity. So essentially, what was the quantum dialog becomes the Kähler potential of this uh, e to the Kähler potential of the Calabiao, which, of course, with some appropriate factor, which is i to the um, to the L, uh, is actually um, a real. Um, <clears throat> hmm? This is a rational function, and a rational function comes when you take this cross ratio. So, because I don't talk about the A's, but rather about cross ratios of the A's. I mean, there are many cr the cross ratios. Okay, so then. Um, <clears throat> I mean, of course, since this is uh, related to reflexive polyhedron, you can also say this is the quantum volume of the mirror. So that, that's what it is. And um, I mean, to make the statement very precise, you have to pull out uh, one of these coordinates. Uh, I mean, you have to pull out, this is all homogeneous. Uh, in in uh, one of these coordinates, you have to pull it, pull it out. But then up to this, it's the uh, is the quantum volume of the mirror. So um, I have uh, almost 20 minutes of it, how, how we are. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, almost. Ah, sorry, I, 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 this is not an hour, okay. you're right. Well, I don't, uh, I don't want to, <clears throat> I mean, basically, the proof of this statement is simple. You just follow this construction of this Calabiao, and then uh, that's it. So, uh, so there is not uh, not much uh, to prove. And um, <clears throat> and then I want to make a remark about the um, <clears throat> new equal six case. So the new equal six case is that if you see a y with this weight. Um, then you can sort of uh, replace it. Uh, maybe I, I draw it. Uh, so you can replace it by a uh, delta. And this delta has then the weights one third, one third, one third. And if you do that, for instance, let's, uh, let's do it for, for, uh, for this. Uh, so this one is a, is a K3. Um, so this, uh, so I can now go go ahead and uh, put this uh, delta y rule here, and then um, <clears throat> and then I erase, of course, this inner point, and then I get a graph which looks like uh, which looks uh, like this, and uh, <clears throat> so I get go to this graph, and now uh, we have again uh, this uh, conformality. Because uh, this all this thing add up uh, to two, but you see, what's interesting is that is actually now one dimensional thing. It's actually uh, elliptic. It's not an elliptic. It's a space degenerate elliptic curve. It's a degenerate uh, G Walker. Uh, but it has, and that is my. One of the punchlines is actually the motive of the Calabiao when you pick an appropriate real structure on the case. So let me um, <clears throat> uh, go to the second claim, and the second claim is is uh, quite far-reaching. I mean, you know that um, <clears throat> that the that if you if you have um, the conformal group in two dimension, it's basically uh, the uh, conformal group with a signature in two dimensions higher, but this sort of say factorizes. Uh, hmm? uh, no, I mean this is here now uh, still a family of curve because uh, because you have uh, you can it's, it's basically a one param one param. and. Uh, <clears throat> And if you 
would have started with a Calabiao threefold, which uh, would be uh, this case. And did the, uh, the delta y rule two times. Now you have two delta. Then you actually end up with a little different curve, namely you have just uh, you have just this curve. But it's still one dimensional. So this is uh, again a different degenerated genus form. But <clears throat> yeah, so one parameter. <clears throat> Well, I mean, I should, uh, no, 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 I, I should, uh, this is too quick. So here I should set I is one parameter if I if I identify this both to infinity. And that is actually what the people call fish, fish map. So uh, then they, they say, okay, this one was a zero, this one was uh, one, and this one is that. And if it's a one parameter model, it's a one parameter. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now comes a really, really beautiful claim. Namely that um, that this uh, splits in the Youngian of SL2R times the Youngian um, of um, SL2R bar. And uh, <clears throat> now you pick uh, uh, this piece here. And, and of course we have in the, for the Calabiao, we have a flat gauss manin connection. Connection. And, uh, and we have, um, we have uh, also, uh, this is equivalent to a D model that uh, degenerate, that uh, annihilates this period. So all these elements annihilate this uh, period. And that one is exactly equivalent to the uh, to the uh, differential equation that is generated by the Youngian symmetry. So that is um, <clears throat> the Youngian symmetry of SL two uh, R, and this I'm not quite correct because that is different. So uh, <clears throat> at times, and uh, this times is a little bit tricky because this doesn't uh, commute with each other times the automorphisms of the graph. And you see the only difference between the three valent graph and the four valent graph is in this piece. But you can uh, <clears throat> actually, I don't know whether you know, uh, but uh, if you, uh, this Janemian symmetry is basically just, uh, is just generated by uh, the momentum, but now the momentum is for, e for each uh, i. So it's i d <clears throat> i j um, u. So this is for each of the external vertices that the Young and symmetries act. And then there is, of course, uh, key, a k mu, the special Lagrangian transformation, the uh, rotations, but they are also all specialized to all external points in the differential operator. And these are differential operators, and these differential operators are equivalent to the D model that is for this color of uh, So then we have uh, uh, an Li uh, mu nu, you know what it is. And we have also a data transformation uh, because the full uh, A, I, D. So here is the A, I, and that's a mu. So this, these things have now in general, I mean, this is for any space time dimension. So here can mu can run from uh, zero to B minus one, or if it's a trivial space from one to B. <coughs> So that is uh, that is uh, quite interesting. That the that is so to say a family of Calabiaus whose picker Fuchs differential idea is exactly generated by these uh, young symmetry. So it's a it's a very nice relation between um, <clears throat> uh, between uh, Calabiao spaces and integral systems, and also a relation between what Wolfgang calls the world of um, <clears throat> that comes from large end dualities like this, uh, this uh, integrable systems for the young Mills theory and uh, and Calabiao geometries. But uh, here is, is, is a super concrete, just telling you that all these Pika Fuchs differential equation uh, are given by that. And I can give you examples that you will know. That's also nice. Um, So 
<clears throat> so basically, um, if you if you take um, if you take uh, this uh, fishnet graph and you take uh, the um, <clears throat> the Calabiao, and you say, I mean, you can take as many uh, things that you want, but you just identify all these edges uh, here and these edges here to zero, one, infinity, z. Uh, then you get um, a picker Fuchs operator, which is um, uh, dl plus one um, <clears throat> um, minus z theta one plus z to the l plus one. So this is the picker Fuchs operator, where this is the logarithmic derivative uh, in this set. And you know, this picker Fuchs operator is one of the hypergeometric picker Fuchs operators that occurs for the, for the uh, uh, fourfold. Then uh, <clears throat> I should skip this point, but um, <clears throat> I want to say a little more. Uh, I, 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 this with the quantum volume I already said, so, but, uh, <clears throat> but uh, let me give you a flavor of how to deconstruct Calabiao motives with this information. And Calabiao motives. So first, uh, I think um, Chuck uh, asked this question, uh, namely, if I have um, this graph, which is the K3, um, and I have here six parameters, but uh, secretly I have only, um, so I, 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 make a, I make now a plot of the branch locus of this guy. So here I, I, I say a one, a two, a six, and here is, uh, is, in, the, is in the, uh, so remember this where P1. Now I have this branch locus. And of course, uh, when X is one of those guys, then I have a factor. And if these two factors meet, then I get a node. So I get uh, this picture. And uh, whenever these factors meet, I get a Y squared equal X squared locally. But I also get it because there is a factor x minus y. I also get it on the diagonal. And these are all A1 singularities. <clears throat> and therefore, you see that the Picard group of this guy is uh, <clears throat> a two from the two P1s. And, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, uh, nine from here and six from here. So it's um, <clears throat> 15. So it's 17. But on the other hand, this guy has. Uh, six parameters minus three of the PSLs for solution. So you split actually the, uh, uh, the middle comma, I mean the H1, H22, you split it in 17 and three. And that uh, suggests that this is still the generic color of Yau, <coughs> uh, K3 that you parameterize with. Yourself. So first of all, you have to resolve it. This one parameter family makes sense as a smooth K3. Secondly, uh, these, um, <coughs> there's no, a secret symmetry in this problem, but this will uh, change if you take this one. Uh, so if you take this one, then of course here we have uh, we have uh, only two two lines because uh, this can be a one and a two for x one, so it can be a one, a two, and then it can be a three and a four. Um, for x2, uh, and still you have the diagonal, so you have this line. And so you get uh, here these points, but now these points are cut because uh, you have the threefold covering. So you have y3 equal uh, x squared. <clears throat> and therefore, if you make the same counting, you get two plus uh, eight times two because you have uh, a, a two singularity. So you blow up two for p1. So then the Picard group of this guy is um, 18. And you see that you have here four, uh, four parameters. You have only, you have SL2, uh, PSL2Z, you have only one parameter. So basically this is still not a generic uh, Calabria uh, K3 subfamily, but it's rather restricted. And what we claim and what we can see more generally, so we have here this one, and the reason that this one becomes a degenerate elliptical, uh, a degenerate um, higher genus Riemann surface is because you have, um, <clears throat> you have an 
Galois action from the covering group of the of the uh, uh, three covering. So we have uh, some S3 uh, action on the covering. And, and therefore, uh, what happens is that you split the Hodge cohomology, but you don't split it over Z. So in the, in the K3, you have to first pick a real structure. And then uh, you see, if you look in the book of Boykers and Heckman, this famous book on differential equation, you see that for these cases, they already observe that you have that the monodromy is in Q or in Z even, but you have to extend Q by one over three. And that's exactly what happened. And it happens because uh, you have to uh, sort of pick the invariant things under a set three covering action. And so in this way, for instance, if you ever wondered why uh, this case, um, this case, um, the analog of this case here with all threes were never appeared in Duco's list. It is actually a Calabiao motive of a sevenfold, which is uh, a threefold covering. And once you pick a, a real, uh, the right real complex structure, it actually does appear. And uh, so in this sense, we can uh, solve all this uh, series. And in particular, um, we have also always, despite the fact that the monodromy is not integral, we have the monodromy invariant expression. Uh, and um, and maybe with this, I should uh, let you go to dinner. I'm sorry for overtaking. Thank you very much. Uh, we have time for questions. Yeah, this one would be something like why and then you um, if you if you look at what uh this is the you can see the four. And, uh, and essentially, you can now uh, do what's invariant when it comes to invariant. And then you can see the power of 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 I claim that to take this or one of the little parameters of the case three, but it's only one parameter that has this. I mean, and then for the day, for the day, has already happened. Yeah, the one that is then in all these operators now appear as soon as they uh, operate as they come from higher than that. Well, I mean, they are not all uh, hypersymmetric. So that's the first. Yeah, most of them are not hypersymmetric. Only the things that you want, but uh, the, um, well, I mean, uh, they, are, they are not all of high, but they are not all of high. But if you do it for the Right, so they will be for this one. This is for the You could be a little bit But then you would in fact try to do this one. So this has two sides. So this has five and six. And then uh, this side is part of the way to do Uh, I mean, uh, yeah.
part of this happens automatically because it's all fiber. And I can go all the way. I mean, this, the, the important thing is the URL is actually local. So you can do it in every piece of the mesh you can do like. Uh, but of course, uh, in this construction, you go no higher than, uh, than six Take the one and uh, to dualize all the different uh, values. But the um, another uh, another thing, of course, is that uh, these um, these locals have up now where it happens, but can be run It's really the origin is really that the that the Galois group actualizes the factor for the and so this is the next slide. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the monogamy, uh, I mean, when we ask the experience of the person, we tell you what is the intent of the person. But I should also mention that it is derived from the uh, solution. I can make the monogamy with an extension of the gamma class always. I mean, you see, for instance, this And if I now sort of say, uh, do the and I do and then uh, I take the derivative of that and extract the higher level of the number of special bound points. Then I get actually all, then get an immediately a few things. There will be set out three coming up, and there will be um, a cloud in uh, uh, the dialogue of the form. But at the end of the day, uh, it is uh, this gamma class number of three, which is plus this uh, factor. And, and yeah, we have calculated the more than the many things because we, I mean, I believe we can give the this case, this case we can uh, the systemize right now. But for the, for the instance, one of course, you know, but we also, for this case, we already checked that the monodromy is uh, this is the Any more questions? Okay, let's thank Albrecht again. Thank you, Steve.